All right, well, we came expecting, right? I believe um, tonight, every time we come is an on-time word, but I just really believe um, specifically, um, this has just been a message that's been something God's been talking to me about probably the last, geez, over a month, I bet. Um, But just something I believe that um, God's doing in our church family, God's doing here, and um, how many of you were here for Brother Joseph Morris for the services? Wasn't that a blessing? And I just believe he spoke some stuff that just further confirmed what God was doing and speaking um, into Pastor Nate and I's heart. And I believe into your heart, because if you're called to this body, then how many of you know it's an on-time word for all of us? Amen. And how many of you know God's called us together, so we're going together, right? Right. Um, so tonight, the title of uh, the message is, It's Time, and this is a word um, and a phrase that really, geez, the last, well, probably about two years, the Lord just frequently brought this up in uh, my heart, Pastor Nate's heart as well, just keep, keep on hearing that phrase, it's time, and how many of you know, just like Brother Joe when he was here, and we're seeing now more than ever, it is time, right? Right? It's time for the church to be active. It's time for the church to be doing what we're called to do. Jesus is coming back soon. Soon, soon, soon. So are you all pulling with me tonight? We're going to go together. Got your Bibles? Got your notebooks? Uh, Expectant hearts, right? Okay, so um, this is a phrase that just the Lord has been uh, just speaking to me. And just not settling. Not settling. And um, I think I shared this last week, but just what's caused us to stop or to start thinking small? And I just feel like the Lord's just been saying, stop thinking small. You know, it goes with really what Mona shared um, at the close of worship there, where how religion has taught us not to really believe God's good, not to believe that um, we can ask for good things, not to believe that, you know, You can ask, and God wants to give it to you. Really, religion has taught us to just stay small. Just stay limited, stay small. That phrase that it's just good enough. You know, my marriage is good enough. Life's good enough. My job is good enough. My house is good enough. My whatever. Stuff's just good enough to keep us what? Settled, small, Stay where we're at. But how many of you know, what does the word tell us? That Jesus is building his church. Sounds like there's more to do. Sounds like Jesus wants his church to expand. And if he's the builder and we're in Christ, then we're partnered with him, then we should also be what? Helping to build the church. And if the church isn't representing the goodness of God... If the church isn't expanding and growing, how many of you know who's going to, how are we going to reach more people for him? So we're, we're called to more. And so I just feel like just that expanding, God's just expanding right now. Um, so these verses have just been highlighted verses to me that I've frequently gone to. Ephesians 3, you may not have these because I just pulled these up. But Ephesians 3, 20 through 21 says, Now to him who's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus, to all generations forever and ever. So what do we see? This is to all generations. Sounds expansive. Sounds like it. God's not wanting to just settle with one generation. Sounds like your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren were a product of the gospel expanding and continuing to go, right? But I love this. To him who's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we ask or think. What does this mean? God's not just like, here's this, and it just is enough. He's like, here's this, but it's more. <laughs> like, God's always bigger. God's always about overflow. He's not up in heaven with, like, rationing. Like, here, Jamie, here's enough for your family, and 
you know, that'll get you by for a little bit. And here, Chris and Jenna, here's enough for your family. And whoo, stretching the bank a little bit. How many of you know he's expansive? He has more than enough. The enemy wants to convince us, the world wants to convince us to keep us small, to keep us thinking we can't have enough, that it's greedy to ask for more. But do you know it pleases God to bless you where you're not barely getting by in life? And I'm not just talking about finances. I'm talking about every area of life where the enemy wants to keep us settled, wants to say, we've got this far. We're good where we're at. Where God's saying, what what was this song, song just saying? Bring us deeper. He's calling us deeper. He's always calling us further and deeper. Never to settle, never to just stay where, where we're at. So I just love that verse. To him who's able to do exceedingly abundantly. So what you're believing the Lord for, what he's asked you to ask him for, exceedingly abundantly above that. And not according to your hand. Because guess what? My hand is limited. My mind is limited. But aren't you thankful it's not according to our hand, to our power, to our strength. It's according to the power that's at work in you. That's how he can get glory. Because you know what? There's there's, um, anything God asks you to do will stretch you. So if if your God asks you to do something and it's like, oh yeah, I got that. Better better check again. Because he's asking you to do something you don't have in yourself the ability to do or to accomplish. Why? Because then you would get glory. But when we step out and we know this is like Oh, God, you, like, he shows you something. Like, I have a word that he gave me years ago. Woke me up in the middle of the night. I've probably only told a handful of people and Pastor Nate. And you know what? It is like, to my mind. Like, actually, when he asked me the question, when he woke me up in the middle of the night, it took me a couple minutes just to respond back to the question that he asked. Because I was trying to reason it here. But you know what? It's way out there, meaning I look and I'm like, there ain't no way (laughs) Evan Schlegel can do that. No way. But you know what? Exceedingly, abundantly, above anything I could dare ask, according to the power that works in me by him. Right? So we have to, but here's what we have to do. When the Lord drops those seeds of greatness, those seeds of bigness, those seeds of super abundantly, what's our job to do? Receive those words and by faith say, yes. Yes, I can. Yes, I will. I can do all God's called me to do. Right? Okay. So Ephesians 3, 20 through 21, and then this one, Isaiah 54, 2 through 3. Enlarge the place of your tent and let them stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Do not spare. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes. For you shall expand to the right and to the left and your descendants will inherit the nations and make the desolate cities inhabited. I love, 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 love this passage. Because what is it speaking of? Growth and expansion. Don't just stay there. He's saying, don't hold back, don't stay where you're at, because guess what? There's desolate cities to inhabit. We're called to do what? Occupy. Occupy till he comes. So guess what? There's more people to reach. There's more finances to inherit, all for the glory of God to build his kingdom. Because how many of you know to preach the gospel takes funds. So 
So I just hope, here, here's my prayer for tonight. I feel like I'm just kind of bleh on you, <laughs> everything that's in me. But I just believe there's a spirit to spirit and there's seeds that are going to be deposited tonight. That, um, and some of you actually, Jenna, it was crazy. I was watching the Mar uh, Marty Blackwater service. You were sitting right over there and you were little Jenna. You were so young. It was like 2011. But I was looking, I was like, you know what? But seeds that have been deposited dreams, visions, things that you may have seen years ago. This is what the Lord's been talking to us about. Dreams, visions, things that at once I could say I owned. I had. I, I was holding on to that. But you know what? Time. Time happens. Life happens. Discouragement happens. Stuff happens. And you know what? We can we can begin to drift away from the things that we once saw as a real picture from God. Taking real advancement toward that vision, toward those things. Believing him big. I told Pastor Nate the other day, I was like, not that we aren't believing him big, but I'm like, remember like in our young years where it was like you felt like you could just scale a, like, give me my mountain, right? Going to charge, going to take it. But what happens? The enemy wants to start dumbing you down, saying that's too big. That's too far gone. He didn't really mean that. He doesn't really want you to have that. He didn't really call you to do that. To do what? Get you to back off of the very territory, the very place that God told you to inhabit. So we're going to enlarge. So that's what I believe. I've just been asking the Lord, like, and I just picture it, like, I just see my heart, like, I want to enlarge so much where he can just keep dumping stuff in there. And it just keeps, like, getting bigger. No limits. No limits. We're not a limited church. We're not limited. We say that almost every Sunday during the offering. We're not limited. Why? To serve our generation. You're here to serve your generation. What did it say? David faithfully served his generation. That should be said of each one of us, that we faithfully served our generation and did all the will of God. Amen? Okay. So I'm going to share from that service where baby Jenna was at. But I'm going to share um, just some things that Brother Marty said that I feel like, how many of you know... God's words to us never expire. So things he shared with you years ago, our natural selves want to say, oh, well, that was back in 2000, whatever. Like that was for that year. That was for then. But how many of you know the word, your Bible that you're holding in your hand was thousands of years ago, but yet it's alive, it's active. He's watching over his word to perform it. It hasn't expired. It hasn't gone out of date. Right? So the, the same way that we receive that word, we should receive those spoken words of God as not out of date. Too far gone. Those are in my present right now. So he spoke this. Um, he talked about a day of Pentecost that launched a group of ordinary people into extraordinary lives. And he said this, you stand as a church and as a people on the threshold and at the door of a new time, a new season, and a new day, a new way of doing things. He said, there's been tremendous diligence and preparation made to laying a solid foundation for this work and ministry throughout the years. Now it is time for the expansion of it. God has strategically placed and prepared and equipped every person in this place. I'm going to say that again. God has strategically placed and prepared and equipped every person in this place. And he has brought you to this place for such a time as this. So guess what? If you're sitting here tonight, this word's for you. You're in the right place at the right time. Doing the right things with the right people 
Don't let the enemy convince you otherwise. God has endeavored to get, gather all the pieces of the puzzle, and he is fitting them together for this season. Um, and then he, he highlighted the prayer of Jabez, 1 Chronicles um, 4, 10. It says this, oh, that this is Jabez. He said, oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me. Isn't that good? That you would bless us. So for this church family, the Lord's blessing us indeed. He's enlarging our territory. And his hand is with us. He said, um, it says, it seemed very evident to Brother Marty that it would be God's divine intention in this time and in this season for this church to bless us indeed. To enlarge our coasts, to expand our influence, to grant us favor to make us more effective. How many of you want to be more effective? That word too. Just, Lord, that I wouldn't be just just spewing stuff or just like busy doing stuff, but that it would be precise, that it would be effective, that I'm not wasting time on stuff. So effective. Um... And for his hand and his spirit to rest mightily upon this place and upon this people. So I'm going to talk just for a second about your place in the body. Because how many of you know your place in the body is so significant? And we teach this a lot here, but it is so key. Your place in the local church. Your place where God set you. So, did you know that you're set in this body, if God's called you to be on church, then God set you here. Someone may have invited you, you may have drove by, you may have come through, whatever, however you got here. But you've chosen to say, Lord, this is my church family, this is where God has planted me. God planted me, right? Right? So, people think they can just go to church wherever they want, which it's their choice. They can. But it may not be the place that God saw fit to set them in. So, 1 Corinthians 12, 18 says this, But now God has set the members, each one of them, in the body just as it pleased him. So, keywords, pleased him. Not pleased me. Yes, Pastor Evan, <laughs> just as it pleased him. Because guess what? Even in my local church growing up, there's things that I saw that I was like, eh, or I, you know, the whatever stuff. But you know what I knew? This is where God set me. And it's not about pleasing Evan. It's about pleasing God. It's about pleasing him. How many of you know this life gets so messed up when we shift our perspective from pleasing God to pleasing myself? I'm here to please him. I'm not here to please me. And this is why frequently telling our flesh no is a good thing. Because our flesh wants to do what our flesh wants to do. Right? Our flesh doesn't want to get up. Our flesh wants to eat that extra piece of whatever. Our flesh wants to watch that show. Our flesh wants to name it. Our flesh wants to do it. But if I'm to please the one who enlisted me, him, more so pleasing him than pleasing me. So where it's pleased him. So where I go to church... Where I hook up, where I give my supply matters. The enemy is great at convincing us, not just in this area, in so many areas of life, it doesn't matter. It's not that big of a deal. But how many of you know small things are a big deal to God? Little things, motives of your heart are a big deal. Um, 
so. It's not a matter of personal choice. It's a matter of obedience and responsiveness to the leading of the Spirit for where God has planted you. So don't leave your place. And I'm not just saying this because Pastor Evan is just trying to keep you at Beyond Church. That's between you and God, and you go where he's told you to be. But where he's told you to be, you better be. Because where he's told you to be is where his voice to you flows more clearly. On-time words are there for you. Provision is there for you. Life is there for you. So don't leave your place. Not because of offense, strife, any other reason. Stay in your place. Because if we don't make this decision, and it's not just a one-time decision. I've had lots of opportunity in my life, even as Pastor Evan, to say, see ya. We all have. So it's not just a one-time decision. This is a decision we have to make to not allow the enemy to pull us out. Staying in our spot. And how many of you know, if the enemy can get us out of our spot, he's great at just having us wander around. Wandering, which leads to wondering, which leads to lots of questions, which leads to lots of... Right? Right? But if I stay where I'm supposed to be and I trust God, there's life, there's provision there. Amen. So um, stay put. Say, I'm going to stay put. I believe in the local church. Amen. I believe in the local church too. So my testimony is I was raised in the local church. I know a lot of you were as well. I have been and continue to be fed the word of God in the local church. I met Pastor Nate in the local church. I've raised my family, my boys, in the local church. Not just because I'm Pastor Evan, because I know the significance of the local church. And you know what? There's times over the years where, I don't know, something happens or whatever and we're not going. And I've had our boys be like, uh... It's church. We're going. Right? How many of you, your kids have, like, kicked you in the booty before? Right? Say, we're going to church. My life is in the local church. I have family. I have ministry friends. I have friends outside of Beyond Church. But I'm telling you, my life is in the local church. My heart is in the local church. This should be your testimony. So people ask Brother Hagen this, um, and this is where Pastor Nate and I went to Bible school, one of our spiritual fathers. And they asked him, Brother Hagen, what's God doing today? He said, the same things he was always doing and has always done. He is building strong local churches that teach the word of God and flow with the Holy Spirit. Amen. So let's look at Acts uh, 8, 4 through 8. And we're building here tonight, okay? We're building. So we're going to look at Philip. How many of you are familiar with Philip in the Bible? Philip was an evangelist, so we're going to look at him. But Philip, let's just look at if Philip had not been faithful in the local church. This is um, awesome. So Acts 8, 4 through 8. It says, Therefore those um, who were scattered went everywhere preaching the word. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ to them. And the multitudes with one accord heeded the things spoken by Philip, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits, crying with a loud voice, came out of many who were possessed, and many who were paralyzed and lame were healed, and there was great joy in that city. So what do we see? Philip the evangelist was doing awesome things for the Lord, wasn't he? But let's back up to Acts 6. And Acts 6, if you look there, it talks about how there was some disgruntled, there was some uh, ick going on in the church of Jerusalem because there was people not being fed appropriately or what they thought was. 
So Philip was one of the original seven in the local church of, the, of Jerusalem chosen by the apostles to wait on tables and serve food in the ministry of helps. So what if Philip had not been faithful in his spot? What if he had decided to be a part of the problem instead of the answer? So people were disgruntled because they felt that people were being ignored. So what did they do? The apostles chose people to go wait on the table so they could stay to pray and study the word. And then they chose ministry of helps, which is what our serve team is. Ministry of helps to go do what? Serve the tables. So Philip was part of the answer. Because he was faithful in his place and stayed in his position, look what took place later on in Acts 8. So you never know what opportunities you might miss if you're out of your place. And not just that, but your eternal reward, rewards. Do you remember Brother Joe talking about that? The reward seat of Christ, where everything you've done for the Lord with the right heart motives is going to be rewarded. Do you know your service is a reward in heaven? Simple things of greeting at the door. Serving food, whatever it is that you do for him, that's rewarded. Amen. So, that was just really a little intro <laughs> to what we're going to talk about tonight. But I wanted to share that because it's so important for us to understand our place in the body and that it's significant. And not to miss opportunities to serve others, to serve the Lord, to stay where he's told you to stay, to do what he's told you to do. And if that's, in, maybe it's just for encouragement for all of us tonight. To just keep doing what God's asked us to do. Stay put, stay faithful, and watch what God does with that. Okay, so... Um, so we're going to look tonight at a couple principles of um, faith that I believe just this season that we're stepping into as a church family of the blessing of the Lord, the increase of the Lord, expansion, things, times of fulfillment. And I'm not just talking about as a whole for Beyond Church, I'm also talking about for you as an individual. Because how many of you know a church family can't be blessed if the individuals aren't blessed? right? So principles of faith that are going to assist us in this um, time that we're walking in right now. So how many of you know whenever um, you talk about the supernatural, whenever you talk about faith, there's always two elements involved, God's part and my part. It's not just all up to God. It's not just all up to me. God set it up where there's a partnership. So even in salvation, what did you have to do? You heard the gospel, but you had a response, didn't you? You had to believe in your heart. You had to confess with your mouth, and then you were redeemed, right? Made new. So there is always a response in faith to his invitation. So in this invitation and in this season that we're in of blessing, of God wanting to expand us, of those dreams and visions and those things that are on the inside of us. How many of you know we can't just go, yep, Lord, drop them on us? Right? doesn't work that way. How many of you know he speaks stuff to us, but then it's our job by faith to grab a hold of those and to begin to put action to that. Right? So we have a response. So he said this, just as a reminder, that as a church family in this season, we're on the threshold of blessing, increase, expansion, and fulfillment. So um, let's look at John 2, 1 through 9. And this is kind of the first principle we're going to look at for our response to God's invitation. Aren't you thankful that he's inviting us into more? He's inviting us to not just stay where we're at. For your life, do you know he wants you to increase financially? He wants the health of your body to increase. He wants your soul to prosper. He wants your relationships to flourish. We have to start seeing that, believing it, dreaming bigger, 
not thinking it's just good enough. So John 2, 1 through 9, it says this, On the third day there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Now both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. And when they ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. Jesus said to her, Woman, what does your, your concern have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Whatever he says to you, do it. Now there were, excuse me, set there six water pots of stone according to the manner of purification of the Jews containing 20 or 30 gallons apiece. Jesus said to them, fill the water pots with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, draw some out now and take it to the master of the feast. And they took it. When the master of the feast had tasted the water that was made to wine and did not know where it came from, but the servants who had drawn the water knew, The master of the feast called the bridegroom, and he said to him, Every man at the beginning sets out the good wine, and when the guests have well drunk, then the inferior, you have kept the good wine until now. Sounds like super abundantly. Sounds like Ephesians 3.20, doesn't it? But you know what I love about this? There was several invites from Jesus here. What did they have to do? They had the water pots. They had to get the water pots. And then he told him to go fill him with water. That was an opportunity to be like, Jesus, um, fill him with water? Right? Then they, so they did that. They obeyed. And then they came back. And then he said, hey, now take it. This is like growth. (laughs) You see growth. So first he tells them just to take the step to go get the water, fill the pots. Now he's telling them, go take those pots to the master. In other words, like the head honcho, the head dog of the wedding. Guess what they did? They did it. And guess what they witnessed? They witnessed the miracle. They could have had the opportunity, number one, to not be there, not even to be at the wedding. Number two, they could have had the opportunity to think Jesus fell off of his rocker. Jesus had never performed a miracle. It's not like they had reference for, oh, yeah, this is the guy that does all the miracles. They had no anything to step out on of previous miracles because this is Jesus' very first one. So they couldn't even lean on that. They just had to lean on his word to them to say, go do this. And then what happened? They were not only a witness to the miracle, they were a part of the miracle. Jesus didn't go fill the pots with water. Jesus didn't go deliver the pots to the master. They did that. He just instructed them with his word. They did it. He performed it. So here's the first principle. Whatever he says to us, we do it. Say that. Whatever he says to me, I do it. And I'm going to add this. Right away. All the way. We would tell our boys this. And with a happy heart. That's obedience. Obedience isn't two years later. When I get around to it. Oh, Lord, you want me to... Bow down and worship. Whatever he says to you, do it. Guys, we have to adopt this as a principle. Because what do we see? The miracles that took place in the Bible were all because people took God at his word and did something with it. Right? So whatever he says to us, we do it. Brother Marty said this, even if it defies conventional wisdom or logic or your own personal preference, even if it's outside of my comfort zone, we could just ponder that for a second, right? Guess what? The stuff God calls you to do is going to be outside of your comfort zone. Yes, it will be. What God asks you to do, if you want to stay comfortable, you can stay comfortable, but don't plan on being a part of miracles. 
just be comfortable and stay where you're at. And you know what? God will love you. He's, he does love you. But that doesn't negate the fact that he's calling you into more. And more requires you to be stretched. More requires you to grow. More requires you to get outside of your box. Just saying. If it was up to me, I wouldn't be up here. I'm, I'm not a in front of people speaker. Like, I'd be fine in the back. Helping. Doing whatever. But you know what? God said otherwise. But you know what I had to say to it? Yes. So I'm just saying. I just feel like there's too much of the church, our church even, where we've been dumbed down into confined boxes of this is what I do. This is my personality. This is who I am. I'm just this. And God's like wanting to break you out, stretch you. So whatever he says to you, this isn't Pastor Evan saying this. Pretend like this is God saying this to you. Whatever I say to you, please do it. Please do it. Because your comfortableness isn't worth someone else's destiny. People are waiting, crying out for help, for answers. And you have it. But when we're so concerned about what people think, staying in my little box, not ever wanting to believe big, not ever wanting to step out, not ever wanting to do anything, and we just stay here, people suffer for it. And if we can't do it inside these walls, I mean, guys, if we, if we can't shout when he tells us to shout, if we can't come up front when he tells us to come up front, if we can't lift our hands, if we can't minister a word to someone when he tells us to do it inside here because we're afraid of our church family, we got to break out. Break out. Sit somewhere different. Talk to someone else. I'm just saying this. I'm talking to myself, too. Like, this is where God's having us go. We have to break out. Quit limiting. Quit being, let's not be small. Let's say, Lord, what do you want me to do? Who do you want me to talk to? Who do you want me to reach? Who am I supposed to be friends with? Who am I supposed to impact? What do you have for my life? Where am I supposed to serve? The joy is found in pleasing him. And I'm telling you, we get so caught up in just thinking about us. Our life, our, our stuff, our, what does he say? Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then all these things, all what things? All the things he talks about in Matthew 6 that people were worrying about. Clothes you're wearing, finances, stuff we worry about today. Same thing people back then worried about. And you know what Jesus was trying to get him to see? Quit thinking about that. Seek first the kingdom. Seek first the ever-expanding, ever-growing, ever-increasing kingdom. And all those things will be added to you. Have you seen that in your life? When you're seeking first the kingdom of God, when you're like full speed on to God's plan. And you know they say the less you think about money, the more it will come. The less you think about yourself, the more you think about blessing other people, and the less you think about fear of man over yourself and what other people think. We have, guys, we got to get rid of that. Get rid of the fear of man. No place for it. Right? Okay. I'm, I'm, thank you, Lord. We may have to do part two later. So whatever he says to us, we're going to do it. Okay. So, I'm um, sorry, let me see. So because these people were willing to obey the command of the Lord, even though it seemed crazy and impossible and a lack of wisdom in, a, in the natural, right? Like, let's put ourselves back then. Going and filling up water pots. 
seemed a little crazy, but their obedience brought into the natural, the supernatural provision of God. And I'm just saying, the enemy keeps us wrapped up here. Wrapped up here. And when we're wrapped up here, instead of just being quick to obey, quick to respond, quick to what he asks us to do, I'm telling you, stuff follows that. In little things. Little things of obedience that he asks us to do. And here's the awesome thing. Inside these walls is to do what? To equip us, to build us up. Pastor Nate says this. If I only feed my dog, but I don't train my dog, what kind of dog do I have? Disobedient, lazy, right? Wild, Twyla said. Right? So there's something about feeding, but there's also something about training. So in the local church, you are to get fed, but you're to get trained, which means what? Like training, like building our muscles, growing. So if we're just coming and sitting and not putting action ever to anything the Lord tells us to do, we are not growing and expanding. He wants us to grow and expand, and it takes obedience. It takes stepping out when he asks you to step out right away. In the small things, it's got, like, we think, you know, Want, I, I've seen this before, wanting to, you know, go pray for someone and you see them in a wheelchair or seeing someone with maybe out a limb and it's like, oh, I just want to see them healed, right? And we know God tells us lay hands on the sick and see them recovered. But if we don't practice small, little things of obedience, little things in services, But yet we want the manifest, heavy presence of God, miracles in our service, but we can't even do little things because we're afraid or because we don't see it as significant because it's just lifting my hand. It's just doing that. It's just, they could have thought it's just filling up pots with water and missed a miracle. You know I love you. This is training for all of us. I'm talking, this is all of us. I'm not saying anything that Pastor Nate and I aren't having conversations at home. Like we got to break out. Break out and do what God's called us to do. No fear. No intimidation. Quick to obey. And that trickles down to your children. When you're quick to obey, watch. Watch what happens. Watch your marriage. Watch your kids. Watch your family. When you, the Lord instructs you to start doing stuff and you just start doing it, watch everything fall into line. Some of you, the answers you've been seeking is just because you've had delayed obedience. Your answer is just in that step of obedience. And you will see the fruit of that. That wasn't in my notes. That was by the Lord. So for real, some of you have been seeking the Lord, have been frustrated at lack of answers, and it's simply because you haven't done what he's asked you to do. Could be fear of man, could be feel inadequate, feel like I can't do that, I don't have the right personality, you don't know me, you don't know my past, whatever it is, but the Lord's saying just obey. And there's a miracle on the other side. Right? Okay. Um, so their obedience brought into the natural, the supernatural provision of God. So whatever he says to us, we do it. Even if it's outside my comfort zone, say that. <laughs> whatever he tells me to do. Wherever he tells me to go. I'll do it. It's human nature to want all of our ducks in a row. Some of us more than others. Some of us, we don't care if our ducks are in a row. But some of us like life like ducks in a row. But in the life of faith, we don't always have that luxury. Just saying, like, I just feel like sometimes God just sees our ducks in a row and he's just like, 
Why? Because if, I, if I'm always just robotic, <laughs> never, like, just always the same, doing the same old thing all the time, like, the life of faith is fun. It's joyful. It's an adventure. Because it's always like, what next, Lord? What are we doing next? Where are we going next? Who am I reaching next? How am I growing next? How am I stretching next? Sometimes it will become uncomfortable until you have to move and obey, but just be willing to do what he says. You know what I've found in my life? Every time, every time I've said yes to the Lord when he's growing me or stretching me in something and he asks me to do something. For example, go talk to that person. Say this to that person. Here's the conversation. Lord, I don't, I don't even know what to say. I don't know enough scripture. I don't even know where that's at. I haven't been reading my Bible really good this week. Whatever he says to you, do it. We've gotten so used to the enemy talking us out. And you know how he talks you out? He points you to you. He points you to you and gets you wrapped up in you. But whatever he says to you, you do it. So guess what this looks like? He tells me to go talk to someone. That's what's in my mind, right? I've done this before, legitimately. They're like over here, and I'm just like, okay. And you know what I do? I just make myself go do it. Like, we're doing this. Like, I'm jumping off. And the whole time I'm walking over there, I've had people come up to the front that ask for prayer. And it's like, okay, Lord, what are you? The whole time I'm going, Lord, what do you say? He'll give me one word. One word. And you know what I do? I jump off with one word. Sometimes I'll walk over. I don't even know what I'm going to say. But I know as soon as I open my mouth, he's going to fill it. He won't fill it when Evan's over here. And God's called Evan to be over there. He fills it when Evan goes from here to here. We're expecting stuff from God staying here. Sitting in my chair like this and not ever doing anything. And then going, God, where are you? God, why haven't you done this? God, God, God. And he's saying, hey, hey, get up and do what I've asked you to do. We have convinced ourselves that we can stay stagnant and sit and do nothing and still expect God to do something. Faith doesn't work like that. Faith is at his word. At his word. Do you know every time miracles in the Bible, people had to move? Remember the blind man? Go down, put Woman with the issue of blood, lots of years, didn't have a lot of strength, spent all her money. Guess what she had to do? She didn't just stay here and pout. She got up. She went over and said, I'm getting my miracle. Church, we have sat, 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 sat for way too long. Let's get up. Whatever he says to us, do it. I believe the Holy Spirit's going to bring this to us. When we're out and about, when we're with our families, when we're, and I'm talking little things. He may tell you, cook this for your family. And you know what you think? (laughs) That's weird. But then the Holy Spirit's going to say, whatever he says, do it. And guess what? Does it have some spiritual effect maybe at the end for cooking your family the dinner he told you to cook? Maybe. But maybe it's just practice of whatever he says to you, do it. I just believe we're in the season where God's wanting to pour out his spirit. God's wanting to do miracles. God's wanting to do super abundantly 
above all we could ask or think. He's wanting to. He's ready to. But church, we have to move. It's not enough to just play church. It's not enough to just sit there. And this is what I heard really actually on election night. I, I called my mom the next day. And she said, I heard something so strong. She told me. And I said, Mom, I wrote that down word for word last night when I was going to bed. This is what I heard. We have a time span right now. Now take this or leave this. This is just what he told me. It's like we've been given a window. And you know what God's saying to the church? Get up. Get up. Whatever I tell you to do, do it. He can't work with people who aren't doing anything, who are stagnant and just expecting something to fall. Like what if we had church services where everyone came in with the mindset, whatever you tell me to do today, Lord, I'm going to do it. What if going to work, we had the mindset, whatever you tell me to do today, Lord, I'm going to do it. What would happen? Even in small things, what would happen? Lord, whatever you tell me to do, I'm going to do it. Miracles on the other side. Let's stand tonight. Didn't get through all of it, but we got where we needed to. So I'm going to read, actually. Um, this was a, a word that Brother Joseph Morris had. If you weren't here, go listen to the services again, start to finish. Sunday morning and Sunday night, because if you missed either one, you're missing 50%. Okay? Yes, we can do that. We'll, okay. If we say yes, if we say yes, we're going to actually go do it, right? Right? This is part of training. We don't need yes people if we're not going to be yes people. We're true to our word. Whatever he asks us to do, we do it. But he said this, and he prayed this um, at the end. Let me see where I want to start. Um, he said, this is not a bad thing. This is a good thing. It's called consecration. Really, that's what we're talking about tonight. Consecrated to the Lord to say, Lord, whatever you want me to do, I will do it. Um, he said, it's what we do when we hear a message about the reward seat of Christ. It arrests us to do the will of God. So what we want to do, let's bow our heads and close our eyes. And you, So you can do this right now. And I'm just going to read what he said. Time of consecration, time with the Lord. So everyone close your eyes. He said, if there's anything in your life that's keeping you from running faster or weights or sins, even just weird attitudes, whatever it is, just get them all out right now so that we can go into the Christmas season and Thanksgiving with a heart that's consecrated and dedicated to the will of God. And he said this, Lord, we come before you. We thank you for these radical plans for this church. Lord, for Beyond Church, you've got things set in motion by your spirit to be the most effective season ever for this church. The most effective, effective season ever as this church. So Lord, we take this moment to bow our heads and close our eyes and help us strip everything out that would be encumbering to us to run our race. We get rid of mentalities and thought patterns, and Jesus, we look to you, the author and finisher of our faith. We thank you for it. Jesus, 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 we see you while we see you. You've given us a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. There is an insight into your plans for this church. Lord, we thank you for it. We thank you for it. We thank you for it. We give you glory. We give you honor and praise. And he said, wow, he loves you. Now what happens when we do that consecration part is the very last thing that he told you to do, he'll remind you. He'll go, he'll go okay, I dealt with you about this now. And then he'll give you new revelation or give you new assignments. Man, this is an, 
This is a season where assignments are just being blasted into the church. And you might think, well, I don't feel qualified to do that. Man, get behind everybody. No one feels qualified. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You could call it a preparation for the very last moment. This whole church, you feel it for the whole church. Now listen really carefully. You'll have to come, um, it'll come to you this afternoon. You'll hear words come to you. Okay, that's my part, that's my part, that's my job, that's my job. It's almost like when they were going to hit Normandy. You remember when it was D-Day? They got all the groups together. You got Air Force, Infantry, and what happened in one day, there was a thought pattern basically that stopped World War II. So they got all ready for that one beach at Normandy. So everybody's in position. What I'm saying is God is going to give you some instruction about the things that he'll have you do in the church. And with those instructions will come grace. And with that grace will come anointing. And with that anointing will come a boldness. This is for you to do what God's called you to do. But it's going to be so supernatural, a supernatural thread out all throughout the whole church. I don't know, you may be grilling hamburgers, he said, and you'll go, I see exactly what I'm supposed to do in the church because he wants all hands on deck. All hands on deck. Whatever he tells us to do, we're going to do it. A season of expansion, a season of increase, a season of blessing, a spirit, a season of growth. Let's just lift our hands to him tonight. Father, we thank you so much for the work that you're doing in us, through us. And Lord, we receive this really assignment, this season, this time that you've given us, this span of time. And Lord, we consecrate ourselves to you. We say we're in the right place at the right time, doing the right things with the right people. We thank you, Lord, for the work you're doing inside, beyond church, and beyond these four walls, preaching Jesus, everyone, everywhere, every day. We bind a spirit of fear, a a spirit of fear of man, and we tell you to go in the name of Jesus. We thank you. We are graced to do all you've called us to do, to break out of our box, to respond to you. We thank you. We're quick to respond, quick to obey. And we thank you for the work that you're doing. We thank you for signs, wonders, and miracles in this house and outside of these walls, advancing and reaching Alma and beyond all that you've called us to do. We thank you, Lord, just for dreams and visions. We thank you, seeds, seeds that have been planted years ago being rekindled again, rekindled and and just seeing clearly again those things that you've placed in our heart, Lord. It's not too big. It's not too far gone. We thank you. We're in perfect step with your plan. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Love you all so much. Everyone give Miranda a happy birthday. She's going to love me for this. She's 40 today. (laughs) Happy birthday. Okay, well, we love you all so much. Do you have an announcement for setting up? Don't go anywhere. Hang on. We got some work to do for family Thanksgiving. Man, that was good, wasn't it? Praise the Lord. Thanks, PE. Hey, yeah, so y'all know we've got family Thanksgiving coming up Sunday, right? Are you pumped? All right, we'll see how pumped you are. We need to get this sanctuary flipped tonight, so if you can stay and help, that would be great. Um, It's going to look a lot like we did last time for team night if you happen to be here. Um, So I will say if you've got to go get your kids, that's great. Uh, I would ask everybody get all your stuff and head out. And you- Thank you for joining us. We hope you were strengthened and encouraged by the Word of God. If you need prayer, feel free to text us at the number on the screen below. You can also send us an email to info at beyondchurch.org or submit a prayer request form on our website at beyondchurch.org. If you'd like to partner with us in preaching Jesus, you can give securely online through our app or website, or if you prefer to mail your gift, send it to the address shown below. Stay connected with us throughout the week. You can download the app for all of our latest messages and announcements, and be sure and follow us on our socials at Beyond Church. If you've never attended in person, we highly encourage you to plan a visit. You'll never regret prioritizing godly community. We love you and hope to see you soon.